does your pool water look dull or listless or it just doesn't look sparkling crystal clear like it used to or you seem to remember that it used to look and you might very well be right there are actually a number of different reasons why your pool water could look like that so let's talk about some of the common ones right now so the first thing i'm thinking if you're looking at your water and it doesn't quite look good it doesn't sparkle it's not necessarily cloudy but it's not necessarily perfectly clear either right away chlorine levels go to your test kit test your water and you want to test your your chlorine level but specifically you want to test your free chlorine and your total chlorine or if you have the availability you just want to test the combined chlorine level combined chlorine is like your used chlorine it's spent it's done its job oxidizing or sanitizing organic debris but it lives as a residual in the water as a chloramine or this combined chlorine and ideally you don't want that when your combined chlorine levels climb anything up to one part per million that's kind of like your range by the time you hit one part per million of combined chlorine you need to take action you have a problem here your water is not looking great it's not necessarily reacting well to the treatments that you're doing and maybe it even is starting to smell not so great as well your combined chlorine should be equal to zero so that means free chlorine and total chlorine those numbers should be exactly the same and when they are not this indicates combined chlorine and that's something that can and will make your pool water look bad and in a nutshell how to get rid of your combined chlorine is through a process called breakpoint chlorination where you increase the free chlorine count in your water to be 10 times the combined chlorine level so if you had one part per million combined chlorine well we need 10 times that to get rid of it so 10 parts per million free chlorine and hold it at that 10 parts per million for 12 hours and then that should effectively reduce on the combined chlorine levels the next time you test your water your free chlorine level and your total chlorine level should now be equal if your water kind of looks cloudy or dull or listless it could be that you're not filtering your water enough it possibly could be that you're also not filtering your water effectively enough so let's talk about those two things how much is enough for filtering your pool water well there is what is what people do but then there is what is recommended to do and often these two things are not the same so what most pool owners do is filter their water one turnover per day so let's say you have a 10,000 gallon pool so that means one turnover would be you filter 10,000 gallons of water a day the problem with that is is you don't actually end up filtering all of your water every day because some of it got filtered twice some of it didn't get filtered at all and so you could have a slightly higher uh, level of organic debris within the pool or contaminants within the pool that you could have otherwise physically moved with the the uh, filter media so instead of running 10,000 gallons per day or one turnover ideally I like to recommend three turnovers of your pool volume daily if you turn over 30,000 gallons through your filtration set in a 10,000 gallon pool thereby three times turnover of the volume of the pool that will effectively get 95 percent of the water in your pool at least one time through the filter so you're removing the vast majority of contaminants that are that are being introduced or added to the water in this outdoor external environment where anything can and will happen so now that you have some kind of idea how much you, you should be filtering your water let's talk a little bit about the quality of that filtration so right off the bat there's different kinds of filters there's a sand filter or a cartridge filter or a diatomaceous earth filter and each one of them does a different quality of job to filter your water sand filters are very economical filters but they are not quite as effective at removing fine debris as a cartridge filter or even as a diatomaceous earth filter a cartridge filter is basically three times better at getting fine debris out of a pool or pool water than what a sand filter with a number 20 graded silica sand would be and a diatomaceous earth filter is even better than a cartridge filter so there's kind of a spectrum here further to this what ends up happening is not everybody cleans their filter media properly and if you're doing that and not aware that you're doing that at some point you're going to end up with water quality problems because you're not effectively filtering this water 
Okay, let me give you an example. You own a sand filter for this example because a lot of people own a sand filter out there. When is the last time you degreased your filter media? When is the last time you degreased the sand in your sand filter? And the answer from like 99.9 .9 of you with the sand filter is going to be, I've never done that. I've never heard of it. Is that a thing I'm supposed to do? And the answer is yes. In the world of commercial sand filters where you have 10 times or 100 times the bather load in a pool that what your swimming pool has, the sand filter, fil filters just get overrun with oils and gunks and grease and biofilm and suntan lotion and makeup and hairspray and all this stuff. It just builds up. And the backwash process, which you're familiar with for a sand filter to get rid of the physical debris, is not as effective at getting rid of these oils which are congealing within the filter. And that's why periodically using a degreaser product would be normal for commercial sand filter maintenance, yet relatively unheard of for residential sand filter maintenance. So the first thing I'd be doing is if I had a sand filter, I'd be going out there and I'd be doing a degreasing process. And I would recommend to continue to do so once per year. But moving along, let's talk about a cartridge filter. Let's say you have a cartridge filter and your water looks bad, I say to you, well, how do you clean your cartridge filter? And so many people will tell me, well, I just pull the cartridge filter out and I rinse it off with a garden hose and I stick it right back in. And I point out to them that like the pool pump is already blasting water over these filters 24 hours a day. What do you think that garden hose is doing? Like, I mean, yes, it's moving a little surface contaminants, like a little bit of hair, a little bit of, of skin, that kind of debris. But what about all the makeups and suntan lotions and sweat and oils and things like that, that saturate the paper? The filter media is paper and it's saturated with oils and you're taking a cold garden hose and spraying it off and it's... Wouldn't you know it? It's not removing those oils. So you need to be using a degreaser product to soak a paper filter in to strip those oils from the paper. Don't use a pressure washer. It sounds like the right thing, looks like the right thing even as you're using it. But really what it's doing is it's driving that debris deep into the fibers of the paper that the filter is made from. And eventually that filter is going to fail. And probably it's going to fail much sooner than later when you start doing that. So you have different quality of filtration just in terms of the different filters available and the types of filter media that they use. And then you have the maintenance schedule for those types of filters maybe slightly lacking or needing improvement. So in total, these things can add up to be major problems for your water. And your water doesn't have to be a putrid green to have a problem that dull listless look to your water is a problem it's not supposed to look like that and chemically speaking we should be able to get to the bottom of this just through testing the water and taking a look at the different parameters and finding what if anything and probably something is not in alignment or not in the range that it's, that it's supposed to be in for example phosphates phosphates are kind of a complicated subject and something that's hard to get information on. That's something that I've definitely found. And phosphates essentially can be uh, described as a superfood for algae. You add phosphates to your pool and algae just grows like crazy. And so what will happen is you go through way more chlorine or maybe even so much chlorine you can't keep up with it. No matter how much chlorine you add, the next day you have no chlorine and the pool water is green. Well, what if you kind of have reached this, this balance here where maybe your water is not green, but you are using more chlorine and, you know, there is phosphates in the water. If you were to measure them, what would be a symptom of that? Well, a symptom would be that the water looks dull or listless. And so that's why this is something that we should look at if this is a symptom you're experiencing. Test your water for phosphates. It's something that you might have to ask for a special test for. It's not necessarily on every test strip. And here's how important they are. Normally in pools, we measure in parts per million. It's kind of like the standard unit of measurement that we use. Phosphates are so important and so they affect the water chemistry so drastically. We measure for them in parts per billion instead of parts per million. And anything like 500 parts per billion or higher and you probably are having a problem with phosphates in your pool uh, causing accelerated algae growth and causing an excess consumption of chlorine. You just have a higher chlorine demand because of all this plant matter growth in the water. And as a result of all of that, you're 
filter is going to be plugging up, your filter pressure is going to be spiking, and that water just doesn't look very good. So measure your phosphates and see if it is higher than 500 parts per billion. If it is, I'm saying like, hey, this might be a problem. If it is over 1,000 or 1,500 parts per billion, I'm not suggesting it might be a problem. I'm telling you it is a problem. So what else could make water look dull or kind of cloudy or turbid? Being old. Being really old could do that. And what does old water mean? It just means, like, when's the last time that you drained and refilled your pool? A lot of areas you, uh, you'll find that pools are drained and refilled seasonally as part of the winterizing and opening process. But some areas don't operate like that. They just go all the time. And in those areas, you have pools which use cyanuric acid and pools which don't. So if you use cyanuric acid, like chlorine pucks, stabilized chlorine pucks, your cyanuric acid levels are climbing and eventually they'll reach an unsustainable level. Your pool water will be green. You'll have to partially drain and refill with fresh water. So again, we just did a little drain and refill there. And so now we're we, most pools are, ta are taken care of here. Most pools are draining and refilling to some degree, but there are still a small se segment of pools here which are using a unstabilized chlorine and you're in a climate where you don't drain and refill as part of a winterizing and opening process. So now you have the potential to end up with water that is old, like really old, years old. When is the last time? Could the water be 10 or 20 years old in this pool other than splash out, you know, from the kids jumping in and doing cannonballs and that small amount that refills? How old is this water? And the answer to this is discovered through the TDS measurement. And TDS stands for total dissolved solids. And it kind of is just what it sounds like. If you throw anything into your pool, like if I put baking soda into the pool, well, I just increased the total dissolved solid. What if I put salt, a bag of salt in a pool? Well, it, I just increased the total dissolved solids of the pool. So I think you, you see what I'm getting at here. And so if you never replace that water, over time that TDS level climbs and climbs and climbs and climbs, and you do reach a point at which it becomes problematic. And it's not immediately obvious that there's a problem. Like it's not like, oh, the water is green. It's more like this symptom that you're describing here, where the water just kind of doesn't look great. So that's, again, one of the first things I'm doing when I see dull, listless water that doesn't sparkle. I'm doing a full chemical analysis, but I'm looking at the total dissolved solids levels. I want to know what the TDS levels are, and this number can be confusing, so I'll break it down into pools without an electronic chlorine generator and pools with an, electro an electronic chlorine generator, or salt water as people commonly refer to it. So the reason why there's a difference here is because when you have an electronic electronic chlorine generator, you purposefully add 3,000 parts per million of salt to the water. So no matter what we started with, we went ahead and added 3,000 parts per million of salt to the water. This is significant because the traditional recommendation that I'm going to give you is that your water, you know, at 1,500 to 2,500 parts per million of total dissolved solids, that's kind of your spectrum that I want to see your pool operating at. When you're above 2,500 parts per million of total dissolved solids, I'm probably recommending to you, hey, this pool water is getting a little old. We should think about draining and refilling a little bit here. So how does that work when you have a salt pool? Because we fill it. It's got some TDS inherently from the source water, but then we add 3,000 parts per million. So now we're over the number that is supposed to be the maximum for TDS. So we approach it a little bit differently. Basically, whatever number you start with for TDS, when you are 1,000 to 1,500 parts per million above that number, whatever it is, this is your upper limit for TDS. And again, in both situations, traditional chlorine or with a saltwater pool, if your TDS levels get too high, the water becomes difficult to manage. It looks dull, it looks listless, it doesn't sparkle, it doesn't react to uh, chemical and chlorine treatments predictably like it used to or uh, you know, X amount of chlorine that you would normally add to achieve five parts per million of free chlorine in your pool. Well, nowadays you're only getting three parts per million of chlorine when you add that same amount. Whatever could be causing that, it could be that your total dissolved solid levels are very high because this water is very old. When your water doesn't look great, I mean, basically the first thing you need to do is a full 
uh, chemical analysis of the water and find out all of the parameters for all of your different water chemistry variables because more likely than not that's where the problem lies. Sometimes it can be with filtration, sometimes it can even be with a lack of maintenance. Like if the surface of the interior surface of the pool is old and rough and needs to be replaced, well that's going to contribute to having, you know, slightly turbid water or water that doesn't look great or water that consumes a, a high degree of chlorine. But normally, it's going to be something in your water chemistry that is off or slightly off, which is allowing the water to not look great. And if you do a little bit of work, a little bit of investigation, you can probably fix it. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.